Okay, so here we are, lesson three. We are going to be messing with power-ups, collectibles, working with public variables in Unreal Engine. So let's open up our content drawer. Go to our hour of code. Open up the maps. And open up hour of code world. All right, here we are. I'm gonna hit three. So we are currently at the activity destination two. And our destination for activity three is here. Let's go ahead and start off by going to blueprints and drop in a checkpoint in your game. I have two. And then I've got this arrow, so this is where I'm going to spawn, pointing this way. Our goal is to get right here, so I want to rotate the checkpoint to our destination. Doot, doot, doot. Pretty good. Close enough. All right. So, here we are. What we want to do... I'll go ahead and play from here real quick. I hit my checkpoint. And then I'm trying to jump. Not even close. Not even close. So, what we want to do is add a booster in my blueprints. Jump boost. I'm going to drag it in here. And maybe move it up a little bit. All right, now I'll play again. Hit my jump. Boom, now I have the hops. And that looks great. That looks great. But that does not have the hops. So, we've got to do something. Let's do it. All right, let's see what's going on with this boost. I'm going to double click the blueprint for the boost. And I'm going to dock this so I can just flip through very easily. Okay, so what's going on? Here's my boost jump. So, on component begin overlap, the sphere collision, which is this right here. So when the character is in collision with the sphere collision. It's going to send information to the character blueprint, which is right here. And what it's going to send is, hey, it's going to change the character movement. Well, what character movement? Set. Jump velocity. So how much power the jump is. So again, object hits the collision, sends information to the character. Hey, character movement is going to be changing. What movement? The jump velocity. And then it's going to toggle the visibility, right? So when you collide with the object, it's going to turn the power up off, right? So that's going to be gone from sight. So when you touch it, it disappears. It's just going to be toggling the visibility off. So it's still going to be there. You're just not going to be able to see it. And then it's going to 
turn off the collision, right? Because you've already collided with it. So the visibility is hidden. The collision's hidden. It's going to play the sound. And it's going to play the sound at the location, meaning where the character is and not in the whole entire game. And the reason for this is maybe you don't want the other players to know that you've hit a, say, a new weapon or something, right? If, if you're playing a multiplayer game where if you were playing co-op, maybe you would want to hear, have them hear you hit a checkpoint. So then we have our cooldown time. So the velocity has been increased. The visibility of the power-up is hidden. The collision is turned off. It plays a sound. And then we have this delay, cooldown time. So this is how long that jump is going to be valid for, the power-up. After four seconds is completed, the visibility of the power-up comes back, the collision comes back, then it checks to see if your player is still alive, and if your player is still alive, then it resets the velocity to 600. So currently... When we slip, select the jump velocity, the jump velocity, and this is in my blueprint, the jump velocity is 1500. And after the cooldown is over, the jump velocity gets set back to 600. All right, let's go check out this jump velocity. Okay, so jump velocity is a variable called a float. And a float just means that it's a number that has a decimal point at the end. Nothing spectacular, just a number. Now let's go back and check out the game and select our object, the jump boost, and let's go to details. So in our details panel here, we can modify the jump velocity. Right now it's at 1500 and the cooldown time of 4. What makes this important is that this variable is a public variable. And when I look at this jump velocity and I click on this I, that makes it not a public variable. And you cannot modify the instance of the jump velocity in the world. So I'm going to hit compile. And now when I select it, I don't have that um, jump velocity anymore, right? Which is important because if I make a copy of this Right, so I've got this one. My jump velocity is going to be the same as this one. Right? But if I go back and I make this a public variable. Oh, also, this corresponds directly with this instance editable. Notice when I click on this, the eye opens. 
So they're the same thing. Okay, so now I've made it editable. I'm going to compile it again, come back to my world, and now I have my jump velocity. So I'll turn this one down to, say, 1,000. And this one still stays at 1,500, right? And why is this important? Well, if you have a boost that's going to give you more boost, you can very easily just make it bigger, right? So bigger boost size is going to give you a bigger jump. So let's go ahead and test it out. Play from here. Okay, so I'll hit my first one. Oh, I hit them both. Gotta scoot it over. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so I hit the smally, and I only got this hop. Now I hit the biggie. Oh, I had him backwards. Bigger jump. Smaller jump. And you notice the cooldown, four seconds, and then it returns. We can mess with the cooldown. Test it. That's a problem. What is going on with the sound? Any guesses? There's no cooldown, so it's immediately returning. Right? Watch. So there's no cooldown, so it's just immediately coming back and hitting that sound again, playing over and over and over and over and over again. Where this has a six second cooldown. So that's that. Okay, let's open up our character content drawer. I'm in my blueprints, and then I'm in my game. And I'm going to double click this hour of code character. And I'm just going to dock this into the game so that I can switch back and forth easily. And let's check out all the stuff happening in our game character. So the components character movement. Let's click it. And then let's zoom in right here for the time being. So character movement in our details. Let's search for velocity. jump z velocity so our jump z jump z velocity is 600 and then let's go back to our jump boost and again my jump velocity variable is the i so it's pu it's public it can be 
editable inside the game, not just the blueprint. When we have our jump velocity variable here, this is corresponding to this. But this jump velocity is here. Okay, let's go back to our game and go ahead and play from here. And what I want you to do in this command prompt is type in show capital S collision capital C. All right, so now it shows the collision boxes in my game. And when I hit this, notice the collision is still there. The collision's still there. The collision's still there, right? So these disappear, but the collision is always there. That corresponds with these toggle visibility. So the collision stays, but it's just not enabled. But the visibility of the item disappears. So that's all that means. Okay. Let's go ahead and open up our content drawer. Get rid of these commands. And let's let's get rid of this. So all I have is one. Content drawer, blueprints, coins. So let's go ahead and drag a coin on. So here's my coin. Here's where I'm starting from, and this is where I want to go. So, what we want to do is lead the player from our starting point to our end point. And we can do this with coins. So just go ahead and take a couple minutes and drag some coins throughout the game. I'm going to go ahead and pause this and I will add some myself. All right, so I've added some coins. And again, my ultimate goal is to get up to here. I don't have enough time for my boost to... I don't have enough time to get my for my boost to get me all the way up here, so I'm going to have to add a second one. I'm just changing my cooldown time back to four. So, I need to add another power up. All right, now let's play it through just to make sure it works. Oh, I missed it. Ooh. All right, let's try this again. Okay. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. All right. Good. We're golden. So that's nice. 
let's go ahead and get back to these coins. Let's open up the blueprint. And check out the coin. So, when the character overlaps the collision, and of course the collision is right here, it's going to send information to the Hour of Code game, right? So it's going to be casting the info to the game. And the reason we would want it to cast the information to the game versus the player right here's the player here's the game we want to have the information stored the coin information stored in the game because if you the character dies then it's gonna restart the character from the beginning and you're gonna lose all your coin information where if you store it in the game it will be held so we overlap we hit the, co the collision we start casting to the game. It's going to go to the coin count and it's going to add one. But what if we wanted to make it a variable that we can change on the fly in the game so that we can make one coin worth one and then maybe one coin worth five? just like we do with the power-ups. Well, it's surprisingly simple. All we have to do is make this a variable, right? So right now it's just saying add one. We're gonna go into this little node, right click, and we're gonna promote to variable. So now we have this brand spanking delightfully new variable. And in the variable, let's call it add coin. And you see we have this integer. So an integer is different from a float. Uh, just because an integer cannot have uh, decimals, right? So it's one coin, two coin, etc. It's not going to be 1.2 coins or whatever. So that's all we have to do for that. And then we've changed this to add coins. So now this is our variable. And we should be able to add a value here, but we can't yet because we haven't set the program. So what we need to do is compile the blueprint. So we'll click this compile. And while we're compiling, let's go ahead and save. And now you've got a value for the coin, right? One here. So let's go check it out. Go into my world. And I've got two coins here. Click on the first one. And let's see if I can find the value. Where is it? I'm not seeing it. type in coin. That's weird. Hmm. Uh, here's my ad coin. It's an integer, but it's not public. Duh. So I have to make this public in order for this to be available in my world. So I've changed the program. I have to compile it again, 
Go to world. Hey, look at that. So now let's go ahead and make this coin worth 10, no, not negative one. Whoa, I deleted it. All right, let's make this one worth 10. And then I'll copy and paste it. And then I'll make this one worth five. So when I click this, it's a five. When I click this, it's a 10, right? So the whole point of this is to show you how you can make public variables, right? So that you can change them on the fly in the game. Save your work.